The production process of a smartphone occurs in about five stages. Prototyping, software installation, testing, mass production, and finally, packaging. And these steps are carried out in a smartphone factory. Contrary to your belief, these factories are not usually specific to each smartphone brand. Let's take a look at iPhones for example. More than half of all the iPhones produced worldwide are produced by an electronics manufacturing company called Foxconn. Foxconn is based in Taiwan, but since it's an international company, it has different branches across Asia. Foxconn has a plant in the Zhengzhou district of China, which specializes in producing iPhones. In fact, more than half of the world's iPhones are made here. Over 300,000 employees are working long hours at this plant, as it is the only way to meet up with the high demand for iPhones across the world. The employees are divided into different groups, and each group has a specific job description, so they might end up doing the same thing for hours on end. This job could be driving a screw into the back of the phone, polishing the casing and screen on the phone, installing the microchips, testing the speaker, or something as complicated as building the battery. In any case, they mainly deal with the hardware production. Hardware is basically all the aspects of the phone that you can touch, consisting of a long list of components. These include the casing, screen, battery, microphone, compass, speaker, sensors, camera, microchips, etc. So how do Foxconn and Apple, by extension, come about all these different parts that make up the iPhone? And how are they built into the fancy rectangular structures we use for practically everything? There are over 200 companies that supply Apple with the components they need to build an iPhone. And these companies are scattered across North Korea, the Netherlands, the US, Japan, Taiwan, Switzerland, France, India, Belgium, Singapore, and a few other countries. The raw materials are supplied by these different companies and sent over to the factory in Zhengzhou, where they are assembled. First of all, let's talk about the cases of iPhones. Since iPhone 4, aluminum metal has been used to make the cases of iPhones, and this choice served its purpose beautifully, because aluminum forms an unreactive oxide when exposed to air. The cases were strong and corrosion resistant. Fun fact, this aluminum was also mined and processed in some parts of China, so the joke about iPhones being produced in China may not be accurate, but it does have some level of truth to it. The aluminum option served the Apple company until 2017 when the iPhone X model was released, and ever since, the casings of iPhones have been made using stainless steel. The company has partnered with manufacturing companies like Jabil in the US, which have supplied Apple with their stainless steel demand. It's true that the new choice of casing has made the more recent iPhones heavier than some might like, but it's also true that this steel confers some level of protection and a different type of aesthetic to recent iPhones. The raw stainless steel is sent to a machine where it is prepared, cut, shaped, and toughened. At the end of the preparation process, the casings come out of the machine having the rectangular shape that iPhones are known to have, and also with spaces to accommodate other components that will be fixed later. Examples of these spaces include space for the charger, the antenna, groove, space for sensors, etc. Next, screws are drilled into each part of the casing, and all the different parts are joined together to form the phone's skeleton. Next, the steel casings are fortified against rusting using a group of chemical agents called antioxidants. Thanks to them, the casings can go years without changing their color. The next phone component that is assembled is the screen and this part is supplied by a glass company in the US called Corning. After the screen is fixed, it's connected to an external processor, and if nothing is wrong with the screen, it should display the home screen of a regular iPhone. Next, the microchips are installed into the phone, and these are produced by Samsung. Other small and delicate components are also installed, and these include the gyroscope from Switzerland, audio chips from Samsung, flash memory from Toshiba in Japan, the battery from Samsung and another electronics company in China, camera from Sony, Wi-Fi chip from Arata in the US, A-series processors from Samsung, compass from AKM Semiconductors in Japan, and many others. All these components can be assembled in about 300 steps, which takes less than two hours, believe it or not. When all the parts come together and it all begins to look like an iPhone, the Apple software is installed and the phone becomes an authentic Apple product. 
Next, the devices are tested, packaged, and transported to different retailers worldwide. A huge portion of the iPhones produced is shipped to the US, which was the world's largest iPhone market until China won the title several years ago. Anyways, whether in China or the US, there are almost 2 billion iPhone users scattered across the world. At the Foxconn company in Zhengzhou, almost 500,000 iPhones are produced per day, which is about 350 units per minute. 